Stunned at how a person's world can change in an hour, I packed up our things at the hotel and left. Driving home alone in the dark was almost an out-of-body experience. Stripped of all emotion, I sat at a stoplight and kept telling myself, the light has changed to green. That means we're going through an intersection. Let off the brake and gently step on the gas. As I drove, my mind was dominated by the suddenness and completeness of Linda's change. One moment I was everything, and the next moment, I no longer existed. But what struck me most of all was how coolly Linda had pulled off the surprise of my life, no temper tantrums, no fights, nothing. She'd been chosen by a celebrity, and she wasn't going to say no. So, she didn't. She cowardly lied about going to the bathroom and disappeared. It was all premeditated by her and her snake friend. A snap of the fingers, and she was gone. To hell with the husband. No, not just that, to hell with the kids, too. Obviously, she knew what she was doing, and she knew it was wrong. Obviously, it would hurt me. And yet, intentionally and knowingly, she left me anyway, on our special night. I couldn't fathom how someone could do that to someone they claimed to love and planned to spend a special night with. If it had been preceded by weeks or months of detachment, resentment, or even hostility, I would have understood Linda's cold-blooded betrayal, not liked it, but understood it. But literally minutes after she announced that all her dances would be with me, while we held hands at the table and made eyes at each other, how could that be, on any planet? I thought about picking up the kids early, but I didn't believe I could take care of them in this state of mind. The question of what I should do floated through my mind like a banner being strung by a small airplane in the distance. The cold-bloodedness of her betrayal seemed to cauterize every emotion a person would normally feel, no anger, no hate, no pain. Just, to quote Pink Floyd, a discomforting numbness. The first time I realized my world had changed was when I woke up the next morning. At least I had time to hang up my suit, put on my pajamas, and turn off the lights. I zombified myself in the shower and slid down the icy driveway to our friendly Denny's for breakfast. Where's Linda? Marie, our usual waitress, asked, pouring my coffee. Do you know who Mark Lavalier is? Is that a trick question? Everyone knows who he is. I glanced at my watch. So, at this very moment, he's sleeping with Linda in his bed, in his mansion. I lifted my face and looked Marie in the eye. She slammed down the thermos of coffee and covered her mouth with both hands. What? No, really? My body language and tone of voice clearly dispelled any thoughts of this being a joke. I nodded and blotted my eyes with another napkin, twirling it around in my hands. I said with a grimace, I'm going to need this one more. Oh, Jim. Ignoring all protocols, she leaned over and put her arm around my shoulders. I'm so sorry. I thought you were the lovebirds who inspired all the Hallmark cards. Returning with an entire napkin dispenser, she slid into the booth across from me and said, my boss said I could leave since it's so quiet in here. Not knowing what to say back, I just nodded. So, what are you going to do, she asked. Blowing my nose and adding a tissue to the growing pile, I shook my head. I have no idea. I'm still trying to make sense of what happened. She reached across the table and patted my forearm. What amazes me, I said, snapping my fingers, is how cold-bloodedly she did it. In between sips of coffee and raking through a stack of napkins, I told her, step by step, how the embarrassment had unfolded. I'll be damned, she muttered. I've never heard of such a thing. Do you think they knew each other and planned it? What would I know? but I don't think so. She was in love with me until the second he asked her to dance. Then it was like he flicked an invisible switch, and she changed, like day to night. I didn't realize she had it in her. Marie nodded. It's like the horse thief thing. The horse thief story? My grandfather always told us that story. There was a horse tied up in front of a store. A guy came in, untied the horse, and galloped off with it. The question is, did he become a horse thief when he stole the horse, or did he steal the horse because he was a horse thief? Many others passed by and didn't steal the horse. Boom. 
I poured a fresh cup of coffee from the thermos. I guess I must have been married to a cheating, cruel, cowardly liar and con man all these years. Shaking my head, all I could say was, I had no idea. Apparently, her manager signaled her because she stood up, patted me on the shoulder, and grabbed a stack of used napkins before walking away. They didn't know. I must have finished my breakfast because the next thing I knew, there were empty plates and more used napkins on my table. Back at home, I started packing. No matter how things turned out, there was no way I was staying married to a horse-thieving cheater. If she acted in cold blood, that left me no choice. In the blink of an eye, I packed up my belongings, a few boxes of electronics, and left. My parents, like millions before them, had moved to Florida, and it seemed like the best option. As I drove, I pondered the question, am I running? Not really. If my parents still lived in the city, I would stay. It was about being with people I knew wouldn't betray me. The fact that they lived in a warm place, away from all the scum that supported my soon-to-be cheating ex, was just a bonus. On the way out, I called them and explained what had happened. Marie and coffee had cleared my thoughts, and I was able to calmly explain my plan to my parents. My mom put me on speakerphone so my dad could hear. Needless to say, I was happy to stay there as long as I wanted. At the truck stop, I got online, withdrew almost all of our money, and transferred it to a new account set up at a foreign bank. I knew I'd have to pay her back her half, but since she decided that equanimity was the order of the day, I made it as difficult as possible for her. She would have to find a lawyer with no money, which would hopefully spare her some good lawyers. Then I reported her credit cards missing. Her lover probably had enough money to meet her needs, he had certainly done a good job in that department last night. I called my boss and took the two weeks I'd been saving for a trip to honor a now defunct wedding anniversary. Around lunchtime, Linda called for the first time. I let her call to let her know I didn't want to talk to her. After the call, a text came in, I'm back. Where are you? Did you go to get the kids? At the next exit, I stopped and answered in order, no. I left. Immediately, she called again, and I, back on the freeway, sent the call to voicemail to avoid the temptation to engage in conversation with her. I disconnected the phone. Let her feel what it's like when your spouse decides to ignore you. At the next gas station, I turned my phone back on to see what happened next, calls from her mom, D, and my boss. What was my boss doing, checking voicemail messages over the weekend? Oh, hell. She undoubtedly got a call from Linda, trying to break through my defenses with a flanking attack. Disconnecting my phone again, I took my last trip. When I got home, my new home, it took me over an hour to recount in detail to my parents everything that had happened. Then I turned to the future. I want to disappear for at least two weeks. Please don't tell anyone I'm here. If it's a problem for you, I'll leave and check into a hotel. That wasn't the best plan in their opinion, and it took a few more hours to think of other options. Finally, we all agreed. They lived a few blocks from the beach in Sarasota, so I took my truck, found a vacant lot by the ocean, got out, and called Linda while the bay washed over my toes. Jim, where are you? Gone. Gone where? Same place you went last night. You went where you wanted to go, away from me. Tonight, I went where I wanted to go, away from you. But Jim, I'm back and, Linda isn't. I love you. No, of course you don't. But that doesn't matter anymore. What matters is that I don't love you. I don't like cold-blooded, lying cheats. But Jim, what about the 10 years we had? A question I've asked myself many times, too. Did you think of that when you kissed your stud last night? Did you think about our 10 years? I had no idea if she had, so it was just a stab in the dark. Linda's sigh confirmed my fears. How did you find out? Did Dee tell you? I asked. Your friend Dee isn't good at keeping secrets. She's as excited about your cheating as a fly is about a fresh pile of dog s. I spoke vaguely, giving Linda the opportunity to be even more confused. But Jim, it was just one night. 
Quite right, Linda. In one night, you allowed a stranger to take possession of you, something you denied me for 12 years. Now we know who you love and who you don't. Actions speak louder than words, B. Another sigh. I'd never spoken to her that way before. For over a decade, I'd pampered and indulged her, always showing my love and actions, or so I thought. Turns out all she saw was a spineless weakling willing to put up with any crap she threw my way. But Jim, what about our two kids? Yes, you cruel W, what about them? Last night, you showed me how important they are to you. If Emma had an accident and had to go to the hospital, no one would be able to contact you. What kind of mother does that? Now we know how much they mean to you. Jim, no, it's over. It was just one night. I'm back, and I'm going to make it up to you. How exactly? Silence. I'll do anything. Please just come back, and we can get through this together. I don't know about you, but I'm handling this very efficiently, thank you. What? How? Where are you? In the best place I can be, far away from the narcissistic C who abandoned her family in cold blood for one night. Another sigh. Who are you with? That S, Holly? Holly Burmeister was my fishing buddy's sister, who pushed all the buttons on Linda's insecurity meter not only was she as plump as a Holstein, she had the softest, whitest skin and legs to die for. Worst of all, Holly loved to flirt, and she and I were constantly exchanging jokes and innuendos. Wait a minute, I said. She's A.S.? What's that doing to you? She's single, and you're married with two small children. Holly hasn't done anything, and you left your husband, who you've lived with for 10 years, without saying a word or looking at him, to sleep with a stranger. You're the W, baby, a selfish and very evil person. Her scream was followed by a sob. No, don't say that. I came back. It was just one night. Right, just enough to show yourself to be a cheating W, pure evil. You knew what you were doing was wrong but you kept going anyway. That's what an evil person does. No, I'm a good person. I love you. No, the only person you love is yourself, and maybe the ahu of you last night. Actions speak louder than words. He's the only one you've given up on. Tell me, was it the best night of sex you've ever had? Her silence confirmed her answer. So, B, you better get back to him but you better hurry up before he hooks up with another married s next Friday. Did you hear what he said in an interview last month? Once again, my imagination went dark. No, what did he say? He said he stopped chasing beautiful women. According to him, it's much more satisfying to succeed with an ordinary, unattractive, married woman with saggy breasts and baby bulges. Beautiful women are always looking for sex and are easy to get with but dull moms always put up more resistance, which makes them more of a challenge. No, where did he say that? There was an article in the National Enquirer in January about his success with the opposite sex. Didn't you see it? You're lying. Go look at it. But ask yourself why you never see him with a Hollywood hottie or with any other single woman, for that matter. The hotties are leaving him for younger guys. The only ones he can get with now are stupid whores like you. Anyway, if you want to keep him, you'd better leave because, no doubt, he'll be heading out tomorrow or next Friday to get himself another sagging boob to boost his ego for the night. Linda's turn to continuous wailing. You're just saying that to hurt me. Why would I do that? The answer was too obvious, and she only cried, repeating, but I love you over and over. Why should I want to hurt you, Linda? Answer me. Because. Because I hurt you, she whispered between gasps. In cold blood, I replied. You knew what you were doing was wrong. That's why you couldn't look me in the eye. You just snuck in through the back alley and asked Dee to lay it all out for me. Because the way Linda Carlyle loves someone is to ask for forgiveness, not permission. Stomp their heart into dust, humiliate them in public, and then expect them to welcome her back with open arms. I sighed. No, Linda. 
You're not just a malignant narcissist, you're also deluded. But Jim, it's over. It was just one night, and I'm back. I'm going to make it up to you and be a better wife to you. You still haven't answered my question, S. How exactly are you going to make up for the cold-blooded cruelty you showed last night? How? Tell me, I want to know. A message came from mom, dinner at 10. When it became clear that Linda had no answer as to how she would make it up to me, I said, I have to go. Someone who cares about my feelings is making me a nice dinner. Her yell made me bring the phone receiver a few inches away from my ear. Who is that B? Is it Holly? I'm going to kill her. There's the mature response of a rational, modern woman. And how long are you going to torture me before you come back? Forever. Let that be cemented in your thick, deluded skull, I'm never coming back, Linda. What idiot would go back to a cold-blooded cheating bee without a gun to his head? You had the best night of sex of your life, good for you. Now, you'll have to spend the rest of your life wondering if it was worth the loss of a decade of marriage. Was it worth it for your children to grow up knowing that their mother threw away their childhood for one night? One single night of sex? Their entire childhood was worth less to you than one single night with a narcissist? How valuable will they feel when they grow up? You want me to endorse the choices of such an abusive bee? Think again, be a goodbye. Epilogue I found a job in Tampa, not far from my parents, and with a nice February holiday. The local soccer team even won the Super Bowl there, without A. It should be noted, the divorce was textbook division of property. Yes, I had to give her half the money back, but making her sweat for a while made me smile. And everything else? Not surprisingly, some husbands, offended by the A's modus operandi, ended his playing career, both of them, prematurely, disabling his knees and family jewels. Emma and Tommy turned into such impossible tomboys when they learned what had caused their home to fall apart that Linda dropped her hands in despair and agreed to their move to Tampa, where they turned into model children. I chalked it up to the weather, but having a caring father didn't hurt. I had several friends back home who felt it was their duty to share the news of Linda's cold-blooded infidelity with every guy who dated her a second time. When she realized what was going on, she found a job in Orlando so the kids could visit her every other weekend. We split the proceeds from the sale of the house, which allowed us both to buy a decent home in the Sunshine State. As the saying goes, all stories are true sooner or later. We find the person we connect with. Nancy was five years younger, divorced, and had a daughter the same age as Tommy. Pretty corny, but we lived happily ever after. It took Linda a little longer, but she too found a guy much younger, and apparently, they found happiness too, until he bumped into and left someone his own age, with a firm form, at a dance club. In cold blood, at least he didn't just disappear. He turned and waved as he left with his new babe. Linda was done with dating and had taken up residence in her apartment with a few stray cats, at least that's what the kids said. Karma still seemed to be alive, though she seemed to have softened a bit in her old age. 